The Jake Asman Show will begin shortly. Thanks to all these great Patreon members who help support the show. Get your super chats ready. Jake will be here in just a moment. If you love the New York Jets, this is the place to be. And now, the Jake Asman Show. Yesterday, the New York Jets met with Jadavian Clowney at their facility in Florham Park, New Jersey. Let's talk about the latest reports about how that meeting went. Will the Jets land the clown man? We'll talk about that and much more in today's Jake Asman Show. So let's hit it and get it started. Man, our Jets are primed for a historic season. We bleed Jets green each and every day. This is not the same old Jets. We have Garrett Wilson. Let's go. We have Brees Hall. Please subscribe and hit the like button below. Super Jet, baby. Cut the line. We have Sauce Gardner. We have Quinn and Williams. The Jets bandwagon is loaded. Now it's time to talk all things New York Jets. It's the Jake Asman Show. Ah, here we go. Welcome in, everybody. It is indeed the Jake Asman Show. I hope everyone is having a wonderful Thursday. If you're a sports fan, I mean, this is one of the greatest sports days of the year. I can remember growing up, whether you were in elementary school, middle school, high school, and obviously college, you would just skip class at that point, and you'd have to sneak, you know, your uh, computer or your phone, and you'd have to be watching the NCAA tournament throughout the day, or you just played hooky all together. But it's a great day, so if you're a college hoops fan or just a sports fan, enjoy all the games, enjoy the madness throughout the day. Underdog Fantasy has you covered. They are today's presenting sponsor. Use promo code ASMIN at sign up, and you'll get a $100 uh, deposit match so you can get all your picks in for the NCAA tournament. I wanted to share this with you guys. Bracket Buster Special. If Duke, UNC, Kentucky, or Kansas lose, you will get a free underdog bracket buster special. Basically, they're giving you a freebie. If one of those blue bloods lose, a pick em special will become available the following day at 12 p.m. Eastern time. So if you're going to be watching the NCAA tournament, you might as well try and win some money with underdog fantasy. This is a tremendous special promo code ASMIN when you sign up. If you haven't played underdog yet, now is the perfect time to get involved. It will make your March Madness experience that much better. Once again, underdogfantasy.com, underdog fantasy app, download it, start playing promo code ASMIN when you sign up. So if you put in 50 bucks, you actually have a hundred bucks. You put in 10 bucks, you actually have 20 bucks all the way up to a hundred dollars. They'll match your deposit. So check it out. Shout out to underdog for being a part of our show. Enjoy the tournament today everybody. Let's talk about Jadavian Clowney. So I've been trying to do some digging on this because I, I have a, a, a relationship with Jadavian Clowney. I covered him with the Texans and I was always a fan of him. He always treated me well. So I know some people in his camp and obviously, you know, just doing some digging uh, with some other people around the league. I heard, and I said this yesterday and then I confirmed it again with someone this morning. I heard the meeting went well from both sides. Now I want to make this clear just because a meeting went well. Uh, I mean, I would find it hard to believe we'd ever hear about a report where, you know, the meeting was terrible. I, I think we just wouldn't hear anything. So, you know, I, I'm not going to sit here and say this means the Jets are going to get them. But I heard there was uh, positive developments, quote, on both sides. Both people I spoke to this morning told me they, quote, would imagine he would take his time with his decision. Clowney's the guy who's done the one-year deal thing a lot the last couple of years. He's someone who said that he likes having that flexibility every year. He signed a one-year deal for only $2.5 million guaranteed with the Ravens last August. Now, there were $6 million total because of incentives, which I'd imagine he hit basically all of them because he had a really good season a year ago. Jadavian Clowney had nine and a half sacks, and sacks aren't everything. Look at the pressure number. He had a career-high 71 pressures. I think some of it is he's on a really good defense that allowed him to play with a lead, but I also think you know, the, the Ravens are really well coached. You know, their defensive coordinators have a head coach in Seattle and Mike McDonald. And they found a role for Clowney, even at his age, the age 30 season, for him to go out there and be really productive. But I heard the visit went well. 
both sides are inclined to try and get a deal done. That was also expressed to me. But Clowney is still keeping his options open. He has not ruled out a return back to the Ravens. I think the Ravens would like to keep him. But as we've seen, they're cap strung with the Lamar deal and some of the other moves they've made. They've had to retool their offensive line, which is why John Simpson left in free agency to the Jets. It's why they moved on for Morgan Moses, who only had a year left. The Ravens are trying to get a lot of compensatory picks. I spoke with someone who covers the Ravens who said the Ravens have their price on free agents because they've lost six free agents so far. And Eric DaCosta, their GM, is trying to recoup compensatory picks for next year. So when you pay your quarterback what they're paying Lamar, you know, the caveat to that is when that deal kicks in, you're going to need to be able to find cheap labor to make up the cost. And that's in the draft. So they want comp picks. So, you know, if the money's close and the Jets could beat it, I think he would probably choose the Jets based on what I've heard because I think the Jets could, you know, give him an opportunity on an incentive-laden deal where he could probably make the most money. I also heard that Clowney's camp wants, and this shouldn't surprise anyone, they want sack incentives in the deal. You know, you look at what Clowney did last year with, you know, a nine and a half sacks. The, the way for him to do that with the Jets, even if – maybe he wouldn't play necessarily as many snaps as he did with the Ravens is the Jets should be in theory, be playing with more leads and they're going to put him in a spot where he's rest, he's rested and he's fresh. And the Jets, uh, you know, could say to him, look, Bryce Huff left in free agency after a 10 and a half sack season. And we were comfortable with him leaving because we looked at Bryce Huff's production and we saw a guy that took advantage of the fact he's never going to be double teamed because Quinn and Williams is that big body dude in the middle. So there's a real role on Clowney, you know, for Clowney to be, um, you know, a, a pass rushing specialist. But I think he's more than that. You know, Jadavian Clowney has always been known for being a guy that is really good against the run. So I pulled some all 22 here of Jadavian Clowney. And just watch the effort he gives on plays here. This is a mix of both pass rushing sets and then running sets as well. Guy, guy was just really good last year. Really solid. He could get off the ball on either the right or the left side. He's got a good arsenal of pass rushing moves. He's never going to be Khalil Mack, or he's never going to li live up to the hype that Khalil Mack had. But this guy's still a really good player. By all accounts, he's well liked by teammates. You know, I I, I never heard anything bad about him. Uh, you know, being in the locker room every day when I covered him with the Texans, but he's still playing at a very high level. And I I, I think it's obvious there's clear mutual interest in the Jets from the Jets' perspective and from Clowney's perspective to get a deal done here. So. I, I am fully on board the JD to the Jets train. Can JD sign JD? Can Joe Douglas sign Jadavian Clowney? That's obviously the question here. But Clowney's a good player. There's interest. He would want a one-year deal. He would want more than the $2.5 million guaranteed he received last year. He wants sack incentives. My prediction is if the Jets could guarantee, let's say, $6 million, plus incentives that maybe could get the deal worth up to 10 or 11. I think that's enough to get it done at this stage of Clowney's career. But I don't know if the Jets specifically spoke about parameters of, you know, what the base would be or all that. I think yesterday, from what I've been told, was more of a, you know, get to know the player type of thing. And this is not the first time the Jets have been connected to Davian Clowney, by the way. A couple of years ago, I remember there was like a ridiculous NFL good morning football trade proposal where it was like the Jets would trade Bilal Powell and Brandon Shell for Clowney because the Texans didn't want to pay Clowney and they needed a tackle and the Jets badly needed pass rush help. Like that was a legitimately suggested trade proposal that was, uh, you know, on the table. So I, I think there's clear interest by both parties. Once again, I heard from both sides, the meeting went well and, and now we wait. So we'll, we'll, we'll find out if uh, once again, as I just said, JD, could sign JD. There is a clip I wanted to play, right? So this was last year, me talking about Clowney on my ESPN Houston show. Most notable free agents that are left. Leonard Floyd, Jadavian Clowney, Donovan Smith. I actually think there's a compelling argument to make that the Texans should bring back Jadavian Clowney on a one-year deal. He has talked about how he enjoys playing on a year-to-year -year basis. He likes having the flexibility every year to pick where he wants to go. He's really good against the run. And you're now in a position without your own first-round pick where I think you want to try and win as many games as possible. Jadavian Clowney still lives here in Houston in the offseason. I think D'Amico could get whatever he has left the most out of him. And I think he adds to that defensive line room that obviously is going to be led by Will Anderson for the foreseeable future going forward. I wouldn't hate it. I think 
think a lot of Texans fans would hate it. I don't know. I see a lot of people saying bring back Clowney. He's- okay. He is a very, very good run defender. Jadavion Clowney as a first and second down player to stop the run is not the worst idea in the world, and the Texans still have a decent amount of money that they can spend. You can't tell me Jadavian Clowney on a one-year deal for $5 million, maybe some incentives where it could be worth up to eight would not be enticing for him. So it's funny listening back to that clip because Clowney ended up signing a one-year deal with the Ravens in August and had a really good season, and he would have been a really good fit for the Texans. But the other player that was mentioned that was available at this time a year ago was Donovan Smith, who's available again right now. And I think Donovan Smith would make some sense for the Jets as their swing tackle, potentially. He's from Hempstead. He grew up a Jet fan. He said he would have interest in playing uh, for the New York Jets at the Super Bowl. I mean, look, this guy is probably not a starting tackle on a, on a great team, unless your quarterback's Patrick Mahomes. But he was starting on a team that did win the Super Bowl. So if Donovan Smith has to take a swing tackle like Deal, he would make some sense for the Jets. Now, I think a lot of us want to see this team sign Bakhtiari, but we have no idea if Bakhtiari is truly even healthy. Can he even pass a physical? I I think when you look at some of the other remaining free agents, I think the Jets need to still adequately improve the offensive line depth. And I think Donovan Smith, who was good enough to, to start on a Bucks team, you know, that uh, had Tom Brady, and then a Chiefs team that had Patrick Mahomes is certainly capable of protecting, you know, Aaron Rodgers. You know, and Donovan Smith is way more durable in his career than David Bakhtiari. And he's still relatively young for the position he plays. He'll, he'll be going into his age 31 season, which for an offensive lineman is not that old. So he's a name I think you watch uh, as far as other available free agents. And then, look, are the Jets going to dabble in the safety market? Justin Simmons is still out there. I don't think they'll want to spend big money on safety, but there's value there, right? The Jets saw value with Tyron Smith taking their offer. They got him. Other safety names to watch, Quandre Diggs, Marcus May is still out there if they want a reunion there. Although I, I think it ended pretty poorly between the Jets and Marcus May, so I, I wouldn't count on that. But crazier things have happened. But I don't think the Jets are done. But I think as far as you know, the wave of action, there might be a holding pattern for a little bit. I could see another signing before the draft. But for those who think there's going to be a big flurry between now and the draft, I think we have reached a point now where we probably have kind of gotten through that first and probably part of that tier two wave. Now, Odell Beckham's taking a meeting with the Dolphins. I'm curious if the Jets would still have interest in hosting him for a visit. I'm fine with OBJ as wide receiver three or four if it's a one-year deal for about half of what the Jets apparently had on the table a year ago. You know, the the, the Jets offered OBJ a one-year deal for $12 million was the report last year. So. If you could get OBJ for one year, five or six million, you know, there's something to that. But after they signed Mike Williams, obviously, I, I think that probably takes them out of, you know, a T. Higgins trade, Brandon Ayuk trade, Cortland Sutton trade, although it doesn't feel like Sutton's available at this point. I think they still need another wide receiver, though. As I look at where the Jets are right now, I think they need another receiver. Now, I'd like to see them address receiver in the draft, and who knows, that could be a pick 10. Maybe they trade up. We talked about Jeremiah's prediction and his mock of the Jets going all the way up for Marvin Harrison. But I think you want to be covered in case, God forbid, there's an injury to Garrett Wilson. And Mike Williams is coming off injury, so you want to be covered. And you're one injury away from still having a weak receiving room. And I get it. You can't have a perfect receiving room, and you're going to rely more on your tight end production and Conklin and Ruckert. And I think Brees Hall is going to be an absolute menace out of the backfield with Rodgers throwing to him. But I think they need another receiver. And OBJ on a one-year deal would be open to it. I think they're probably out of the Tyler Boyd price range. But I don't know if we can completely uh, rule that out necessarily. But one more receiver. OBJ's meeting with the Dolphins. I'm curious if the Jets uh, will bring him in for a visit. And I'll throw a name out there for RB2. I know Will Parkinson's been big on this guy. I don't think it's the worst thing in the world if the Jets were to sign Ezekiel Elliott to a one-year deal. Now, hear me out. He is good in short yardage still. He is durable. And he's good in pass protection. And I don't think he would cost more than 3 or $4 million. I think he could do a lot worse than Zeke. Once again, I think the type of running back the Jets need is someone that is good in pass protection. Dalvin Cook was terrible in pass protection. Forget the fact that he just had no burst and he was a shot player. He was bad, man. He just didn't block. 
I think the one thing we could say with Zeke is he's still good in pass protection if you look at it. So I'll throw that name out there. We know the Jets were reportedly interested in him a year ago. He actually had a decent year, too, on a bad Patriots team. So I don't hate the idea of Zeke. So I think that's kind of where we're at right now. The other name I'd throw out there is J.K. Dobbins. There's, a, there's an obvious connection with Aaron Rodgers. And plus, it seems like the Jets this offseason want to sign former Ravens players. Last year, it was all Green Bay players. Now we're tapped into Ravens players, man. Simpson and Morgan Moses, who's next? Clowney, maybe? So that's the latest with that. All right, I'll say this. Let's get to some comments and questions. Super Chats will always cut the line. I appreciate everyone who's tuned in live right now. Please do me a favor and hit the like button. Last chance for you to sign up for the Jake Asman Show Bracket Challenge. Uh, we got NCAA tournament games kicking off here in less than an hour if you're watching live. So if you get the Patreon or you become an Asmaniac by hitting that join button on the left-hand side, you'll gain access to our free Bracket Challenge that's included in your membership. We got great prizes, including Jets merchandise, Jets jerseys, Copper John's gift cards, Gus Buster umbrellas, and Patreon subscriptions paid for for the entire year by yours truly. So check that out if you want in. I want to give some love to all our channel members and, of course, all our Patreon subscribers. I'm 30 members away from adding a new emoji, and this next emoji I got cooking is pretty special. We added the breakfast sandwich emoji yesterday. So now we're hoping to add even more. All right, let's open it up. Your comments and questions. Take your calls as well on the Gus Buster Umbrella Hotline. If you go to GusBuster.com, you could purchase the best umbrella in the universe. And you could use the promo code Jake to get 15% off on any of your umbrellas. Let's go to Scott, who's first up. Hello, Scott. Hey, what's up, Jake? What's up, man? <sighs> All right, man. I think the most glaring thing for the Jets and what we should be doing. Uh, we need to trade up, man. I know everyone's talking trade back. I know everyone saw that Daniel Jeremiah mock and I want to say it's unrealistic. Uh, I've been, it's not out of the realm. It's I'm talking four or five picks here. Okay. And the reason I say this is because I want to win a Super Bowl, dude. I want to be all in. I want to be all in with this regime. If it doesn't work this year, it's not going to be around next year. We got to do it, and we got to do it now, okay? We have two guys at this in this class as weapons who are going to walk in and potentially be 1,200-yard receivers out the gates in Malik Neighbors and Marvin Harrison, okay? We have the number one defense in the NFL, in my opinion. We have a Hall of Fame quarterback. We have an O-line now. You want to win a Super Bowl? Go stack the decks. Go get this another blue-chip receiver to pair with Garrett, to pair with Brees, Okay, the cards are always stacked against us. It's time we turn around, and stack it against the NFL. This is the move to win the Super Bowl, man. Anyone that I understand the the talk about go get a tackle. We need help at the tackle in case uh, injuries, all that for sure. I understand, but man, that's not that's that's only going to get you so far because Tyron and them they're still going to play at least 14, 15 games, hopefully, you know, and nobody's going to make an impact. It, from that first round, like a uh, tackle is not going to make the same impact as a Hall of Fame receiver potentially can make across from Garrett. This is a move that could really put us over the top, put us in position to be the Super Bowl favorites, guys. The favorites. I'm not talking like potential. We could win it if things go right. This is the move that we can do. Give them next year's first. I don't care, dude. Let's go all in. Let's win it. Go Jets. Love you guys. Scott, thanks for the call. Look, there's an argument to do it. I disagree, though, when you're like, well, you know, Tyron Smith's going to play 15 games. Do we know that? I mean, he played 13 last year, and go look at the previous three before that. We don't know that. No, I'm not against the signing. It was the right move, but there's a reason why you only had to guarantee $6.5 million of his salary. It's because he hasn't played. Morgan Moses, I think, will play. You know, the fact that he played 14, or, yeah, he played 14 games last year with a torn pectoral is insane. He's like, I can't wait to have two arms this year. I'm not worried about Morgan Moses. He's still a very good tackle. But ABT's coming off injury, too. Tipman missed a game or two last year. Injuries are going to happen. I get it. You know, you want the receiver. You want to trade up. But giving up next year's one, that's a lot. Now, if you tell me it's only a two and maybe their third this year or one of their fourths, all right, I I'm more uh, inclined to listen to that. 
But what you're asking them to do, it's tough to sit there and say, yep, that's the right move because, well, they're they're fine on the O-line now because, as you said, Tyron Smith's playing 15 games. Do we know that? I don't think we could say that. There's such a huge risk if they don't have protection for Rodgers. I think they could overcome not having the greatest of receivers because they have two good tight ends. Brees Hall's a weapon out of the backfield, and I think Rodgers' just mind will make guys better. Plus, the defense will give you a chance in every game. Like, as bad as Zach Wilson, Tim Boyle, and Trevor Simeon were a year ago, there were very few games where the Jets were just blown out. That's what made last year so frustrating, which is better quarterback play, average quarterback play. They win a couple more games, they're in the playoffs. So, yeah, you, you could say they need another weapon to get the Super Bowl contention. I understand that. But they also need to be put in a situation where they're protecting Aaron Rodgers because if he goes down, your season's over. So I, I still think I'm pro take another offensive lineman at pick 10 or trade back and do it. For those who want another weapon, I, I think you're in luck. It's, it's a draft where you could probably get a first-round talent at the receiver spot in the second round. So can you trade back and get a two? You probably could get a starting level talent in the third round at receiver. So they have options. I don't think it has to be, well, the only way to make the Jets a Super Bowl contender is to trade up to get a Marvin Harrison Jr. I wouldn't hate it if they did it. But I, I feel like if you're the Jets, you can't bank on everyone being healthy on your O-line. Like if you're the Jets, you always have to bank on the worst case scenario happening. So that's kind of where I'm at. I, I, I'm still leaning with the offensive line in the first round. Super chat from Green Bean. And Green Bean did an excellent job last night. I was watching him and Tigo on their show. Can only have one, Justin Simmons or Jadavian Clowney. Man, I think I'm going Clowney, Green Bean. I think I'm going Clowney. Clowney, to me, would be perfect for this team. And I like Will McDonald, but I want to make sure I'm covered in case Will McDonald is, I don't want to say he's a bust, but what if he's not you know, Jermaine Johnson in year two? Like That's best case scenario for Will McDonald. I think, I think Clowney could be the more impactful player. Simmons would be awesome, but I, I think because of how good Sauce and DJ Reed is, safety is less of an importance for the Jets. I want the clown, man. I mean, look at this film. This guy's got Multiple pass rush moves. He can rush the passer from both sides. He's really good against the run, which if you're going to point to one weakness for the Jets, defensively at times they struggled stopping the run. I think I'm, I think I'm pro Clowney over Simmons. I'll take both. I'll specifically take both, if possible, but that wasn't the question. But, man, give me Clowney. Give me Clowney. Less pressure on Will McDonald. That's kind of where I'm at. Fun highlights when you watch Clowney on tape. Now, if the Jets sign both. I'm going to lose my gosh darn bananas. I mean, I'm going to be going wild. Comments, questions, super chats. We'll continue to cut our line. Hit the like button if you're tuned in live right now. Appreciate everyone for the support. City Burt, he writes in any word what the $15 million in incentives is yet. So you're talking about the Mike Williams deal, right? I, I, I would imagine the official terms of his contract will get released today at some point. Usually it takes a day or two for it to be entered in like the NFL PA system and then you have all the beat reporters who check that and then could, could release it. So we don't have that information yet, though. I think the base salary is probably in the 7 to $8 million range, if I had to guess. Robert says, you think they release Becton soon? I, I've been getting a lot of questions about Becton. Becton is a free agent, Robert. He, he's already met with uh, the Bengals which I don't think they're going to sign him because Cincinnati has already added a couple tackles. Makai Becton's still out there. I do wonder 
if there's just no market for Becton, is there any scenario where the Jets would bring him back on a one-year deal? Now, I would tell Makai, dude, you're you're the swing tackle. Like, you didn't play well enough to be warrant a starting job. I, I, I think that chip has sailed. Though. I, I, I heard from people close to the Becton camp when I was in Indy that there's no reunion possibility. In fact, people in Makai's camp were joking that they were in Indy to get Makai a job. So I, I don't think it's going to happen. The Mike writes in with a super chat. He cuts the line. A lot of $2 super chats today, folks. I mean, the, the, the candy bars that I'm able to buy now are just endless. What do you think about a Traylon Burks trade? No, thank you. What am I giving up? I, I, I'm good. I actually really liked Traylon Burks a couple of years ago, but thankfully I'm glad the Jets took Garrett Wilson. Eric says, report saying Cardinals want to trade back. That wasn't a report. Their GM did the classic, we're open to anything. Let me get the exact quote here. Welcome to lying season. I think the Cardinals are open to trade back because they're going to get a haul for a team that's coming up for a quarterback, probably Minnesota. Here was the quote from Ossie, Monty Ossenfort, who's the Cardinals general manager. I think we'll always have the conversation. We may not get to a point where a deal makes sense, whether it's at number four or anywhere picking. But we're always going to have the conversation if it makes sense. If it's attracted to building our team, then it's something that we'll certainly consider no matter what we're drafting, where we're at in the draft. So he's listening for offers. Yeah, every GM's going to say that. Joe Douglas will say that. And the thing is, the Cardinals did make a trade back a year ago. Remember, the Texans came up for Will Anderson Jr. in that trade. I think if if I was a GM, I'm not saying I'd ever be a good GM, but you know what I would do my first couple drafts? I would always trade back because fans will always defend the general manager that trades back. Always. It's like he's got a plan. Look, he's got all these picks. you got to see the process through. You get truthers who will then defend you blindly because it's like you have this great plan. Like I remember Mike McCagden got a pass because it's like, well, he didn't get his quarterback yet. And then this was actually the McCagden thing in reverse. He traded up to get Darnold, and it's like, you got to see it through. He got his quarterback. Like, I would I would be the biggest leaker to the media. I'd make him feel all special. I'd do the Daryl Morey thing. Daryl Morey, the ex-Rockets GM, and now runs the Sixers. He would love to take beat writers and other radio hosts and media types out to lunch or breakfast and make them feel all important so they'd write and say nice things about him publicly. That's what I would do if I was a GM. I would trade back and stockpile picks where everyone could say, wow, this Jake Asmans guy, he's got this master grand plan. And I've had so I'd had so much job security. You gotta let me, you gotta let me see my plan through. I have all these picks I have to use. And Douglas kind of did do that a little bit, right? With the Darnold trade and the Adams trade. He had all these picks. He had to hit on the picks, but we had to see it through. And now we're in the time to win or you're out stage of his tenure. But it's interesting how that works. Jimmy from Seattle. Super chats us. Jimmy. Boom. Trade down to 15 to 20. Draft an offensive line in the first. Recoup early second rounder. Draft receiver. Then trade Lazard and Zach for a fourth and seventh. I love everything about this super chat. I don't find it to be very realistic. Now, trading back in the range you said and getting a second, it's possible. I think you would at least need to be in the 15 to 20 range to get a team to give you a two. Now, trading Lazard and Zach for a fourth and seventh, I think you you have a better chance of giving up a fourth and seventh to be able to move them than actually getting two draft picks for Alan Lazard and Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson is less valuable than the breakfast sandwich NYJ Matt sent to Mike Williams yesterday, people. All right? Let's be real. He has no value. It's amazing to me that Zach Wilson truthers are still trying. And I'm not saying you're a truther, Jimmy. But like people are like astonished in the Zach Wilson world that he hasn't been able to be traded. Want to know why? Because he's not good. He has no value. He's one of the worst quarterbacks of all time that has played the amount of games that he has played. That's why he has not been traded. The Jets are likely going to have to just cut him, unfortunately. I'd love for them to be able to trade him. I hope the Wilson truthers were right. That Zach Wilson's got value. And see... You Jet fans are morons. You're going to see that the Jets failed him. And Zach's great. And he's going to go play great somewhere else. 
There's 31 other teams that could have Zach Wilson for basically nothing right now, and no one wants him. What does that tell you? And that's the problem. But, Jimmy, I'm with you, man. If they could trade back and still take an offensive lineman, even if they can't get a second rounder, if they could move back a few spots and still get another top 100 pick, I'm in. I just don't see it. City Burt says, your take on the Otani situation. Man, I wish I had a radio show to give these takes. I, I, I was reading everything about this story last night, including all the hilarious memes. Look, I, personally, I think the only thing Otani could do in this spot is probably retire and go play basketball for two years. Let the dust settle and then come back and play baseball. <laughs> but on a serious note, I, I mean, it doesn't pass the smell test. I'm not going to insinuate that Otani's this degenerate gambler that everyone's running with now on the internet, but the story's already changed. I'm supposed to believe that Otani's translator, I get it, they're super close, but this guy had access to his funds for $4.5 I mean, it, it does kind of feel like there's a fall guy situation going on, but I'll wait until there's more information. It doesn't. This story, I'll just say this for those who have read the ESPN story about it. This story does not pass the smell test. I'll leave it at that for right now. This story does not pass, uh, did not pass the smell test. Back to your calls. Let's get weird is up next. What's up? Let's get weird. Get that bum out of here. Go Yankees, my friend. <laughs> um, but hey, yeah, I haven't talked to you in a while. But uh, yeah, I actually called in a Richie show the other day, and I kind of said the same thing. Um, if you look back like four or five years ago, and you look at what who was on our team. And it's like, oh, my God. You could handpick, like, maybe 10 players where you're like, we need to keep him. He's an actual good member of the team. And now you look back, and it's like you can, you probably can't even name 10 that you wouldn't want on the team, you know, other than Lazard and Wilson and, you know, the people like that. But I just – it's crazy how much of a 180 we've done. And, you know, it's got to you know, translate to the wins and all. But, God, if we, if we can even – if we even make a push for a playoff push, man, I just don't see – unless they let off the gas at the end, I don't know. I don't know how we wouldn't um, go pretty far in the playoffs this year. It's all about health, right? I mean, that's the biggest thing with this team. Can can they stay healthy? And it's not just Rodgers, of course. That's that's the biggest thing. But it's 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 the other guys that are on these one year deals that could make or break the season. Mike Williams, Tyron Smith, Morgan Moses is on a one year deal. It's like if they could get, you know, these guys to play the majority of the games, they should be pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah. And go Knicks tonight. Hey, let's go, baby. Sweep the road trip. Even if the Knicks lose tonight out in Denver. What a road trip it's been. What a road trip. Hater writes in, Jets have restructured a contract or two and or extended a player or two before being able to sign any more free agents. They actually don't need to necessarily do anything to still sign more free agents. I think eventually they will do what you're saying, extend a guy and restructure a JFM or Quinn and Williams contract can easily be restructured for cap space. But they don't have to necessarily do it yet. Like, they'll take their time. Everyone was like, how come they haven't done the restructures? And then, notice, they got the C.J. Mosley contract done. And then, a day later, Tyron Smith was a Jet. So, I, the, the Jets have done a good job not basically showing their cards until they have to in regards to creating cap space. Garrett says, what do you think the chances are of the Jets signing Clowney? I think they're good. I think they're good. I think I think out of the teams that are in on Clowney, the Jets give him a, a very unique opportunity for what he wants. Good defense. Chance to put up numbers. If he wants sack incentives in his contract, which I heard he does, he can get that with the Jets. Henry Confidential says, Zeke is still good. He only started to get hate because of his contract. Nothing to do with him as a player. I'll take him. Look, on a bad Patriots team, he was not bad. Now, is he an all-pro running back anymore? No. But, you know, last year he had 642 yards. Scored three touchdowns. You know, he only averaged 3.5 yards per attempt, which is not great. 
But New England was terrible. And he's still a good short yardage back, still good in the goal line. Good in pass protection. I think you could do a lot worse than Ezekiel Elliott on a one-year deal if you're the Jets for RB2. And I think ideally he's RB3 by the end of the year because I think we're going to see more from Izzy Abondaconda. The Jets got that pick right. He should take a step in year two. Hennessy writes in Houston bound. How's the weather holding up? Nasty, Hennessy. Your flight might get delayed. It is pouring here, bro. It is a gust buster kind of day in Houston. I mean, it was monsooning earlier. Let's go to Gary. He's up next. Hello, Gary. What's going on, Jake? Um, I, I love these. Let's trade Zach Wilson and Alan Lazard for a fourth and a seventh. That's Yeah, let's do that. Let, let's just trade Zach for a first and draft Jordan Travis, and then we can all have a big party. I, I'm not trying to get tied up with Zach Wilson or Alan Lazard, like, but they have negative value. Like, you can't get rid of their contract. It's like Ben Simmons. Like, no one is going to even entertain that. Um, but that's not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about Clowney. I would love to get Clowney. If we don't get him, it's okay. Like, this offseason is a massive success. Like, I'm running out of things to ask for as a Jets fan. Like, you fixed your O-line. You got a pro ball, old pro caliber wide receiver. And none of them are really breaking the bank. Like, I'm running out of things to ask for as a Jets fan. So, like, if this Jadavion Clowney thing doesn't work out, it's okay. Like, I want Clowney too. But, like, it's it's not like we didn't have an amazing offseason if Clowney opts somewhere else. Uh, I agree with you. I mean, there's other guys they still they still could look at there. I mean, you know, Yannick Ngakwe would be another name I'd consider. He's older, but he still had a pretty good season with the Falcons a year ago. But I, I think Clowney would be a, a real difference maker for this team. I think I think he would really help. I think he's still a very good player. No, I, in order for the Jets to really compete for the Super Bowl, the defense has to produce similar to the way it produced last year. Like, he's got to be a top three defense, right? Like, so, yeah, he would help that. And I want him, too. But if we don't get him, like, after they got uh, Tyron Smith, I said, if we get Hunter Renfro, it's a decent offseason. It's a pretty good free agency. They got Mike Williams, bro. Like, they're getting, like, impact player game change. If they can get Clowney, it's amazing. But, like, even without Clowney, it's, it's at least an A or an A- minus of an offseason. Yeah. Of it, a free it, agency. Look, I mean, I don't think it, it's tough to truly complain about what Joe Douglas has done. Now, I, I think letting Bryce Huff go, is a mistake, but if he replaces him with Clowney, you know, that's a home run. Now, that being said, ultimately, if you were going to invest on offense, you can't complain about the moves they've made. They have added two legitimate starting tackles. They have improved that left guard with a young ascending player in John Simpson. They have added a legitimate number two wide receiver. They were able to bring back both kicker and punter, which was not a given, given the Jets' history. See Jason Myers with Mike McCagden several years ago. It's been a really good offseason to a point where we could have legitimate debates now about the Jets actually trading up for a wide receiver in the draft. Think about that. Imagine saying that the Jets are going to trade up for a weapon. Not trade up for Joe Hall. Trade up for a weapon, and that's a legitimate conversation. You could argue it. By the way, speaking of Thomas Morstead, he has officially changed his number to number six. We know Garrett Wilson is rocking the number five now. So Thomas Morstead posted this yesterday on his social media that he's rocking the number six. Now, why would they give him the green jersey to hold up here? This jersey is going extinct in a month. Why not give him a white legacy to showcase here, Jets? Come on. So if you got your Mark Sanchez jerseys, they're back in style, folks. You got to go to Embroiderer and get it to say Morstead. Love that. D-Rock, when will Clowney make his decision? Two people told me they don't expect Clowney to be in any rush. So I, I wouldn't expect anything right away. Jimmy writes in with a super chat. Do you think JD is a trade up his sleeve? Go Jets. 
for a player or for a or for something in the draft. In the draft, I definitely think it's more likely. But I think we need to acknowledge this. Did anybody see the Morgan Moses trade coming? No one did. So how do we know there's not another trade coming? Remember, the Jets have all these leaks. 30 sources telling Diana Rossini that it's, you know, a tsunami of leaks and all that. Well, I, I mean, there really hasn't been anything this offseason that's leaked out. Or really since the offseason, a.k.a. free agency started. So who knows? I don't think anyone knows. Um, King of King says, Jets have a visit scheduled with Jordan Travis in a few weeks. Hey, QB3, I'd be on board. Pittsburgh Mike says, you should get Mark Sanchez on the show. It would be an awesome interview. Mark Sanchez is on the bucket list of guys I would love on this show. I have tried. I've reached out to Mark's agent. It has been a dead end. So if anyone knows the Sanchez, tell them this is the place to do an interview. Super chat from the Mike of Mike's. Besides Bakhtiari, are there any solid offensive linemen left for backup? I think Donovan Smith would make sense. He was good enough to start for a team that just won the Super Bowl and protect Patrick Mahomes. He's not great, but as a backup, you could do a lot worse. He's from Long Island. He grew up a Jets fan. Maybe if the Jets offer is similar to another offer he has elsewhere, the Jets could win out because of his connection to the team and because they offer him a chance to play for a winning team. I mean, he went from Tampa to Kansas City. He went from Brady to Mahomes. It would make sense that he'd have interest in playing with Aaron Rodgers. Arizona Jet says, trading up is reckless. Joe will be smarter. Well, trading up is reckless if it's like, you know, your entire draft next year you're giving away. If it's what Daniel Jeremiah suggested, next year's two being the headliner, that to me wouldn't be reckless. That would be, all right, let's go, Joe. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Draft night's going to be insane if we're watching the the draft and then at the bottom we see the breaking news ticker and the Jet logo pop up and it says on the clock if Arizona's there at four or the Chargers are at five and it goes and the Jet logo pops up. Holy crap. That's going to be nuts. Pastor says hit the like button. Amen. If you're watching this live right now and you haven't hit the like button, I mean, are you even a Jet fan? Seriously, there's 769. Nice of you people watching. Hit that like button, baby. I only got 207 likes. There should be more out there. Zach Holmes writes in. He's a channel member. We're going to read his comment. Thanks, Zach. Do you think the Jets should still sign David Bacteria? <laughs> Francesca called him Bacteria, right? I think I saw that clip online. Hilarious. Uh, yes, I think they should sign David Bacteria Bakhtiari. By the way, doesn't Zach look like Bakhtiari in his profile picture there? Am I am I crazy? Are you David Bakhtiari, Zach? You should be a Jet. Come on, you don't have big offers out there. Take the one-year deal for $3 million with incentives. Hang out with Rodgers for the year. You know you're going to play. Tyron Smith's not playing 17 games. You're going to get a chance to play. I think it makes total sense. But I'm telling you, I, I think Zach Holmes might actually be Bakhtiari. I see it. Tell me, uh, tell me I'm not crazy. Maybe this is Bacteria's burner account. The Mike of Mike's. That's funny. I'm telling you, that that's him. Look, look at the similarities. This is the same person. I see it. I see it. Green Bean says, good thing we asked the leak Rex Hogan. Yeah, 
I I'm sorry. I respect the the, uh, the jobs that people in my in my business do. Although I'm not a beat reporter, I'm a talk show host. I give opinions. I'll never be a beat reporter ever. Would never want to do that because I like being a fan. When you're a beat reporter, you lose your fandom. But anyone who's trying to sell you on Rex Hogan wasn't one of the leakers. I I just don't believe it. I'm sorry. I get it. These people have to protect their sources. But come on. I. I, I refuse to believe that he wasn't one of the people that was leaking out info. Omar writes in, let's go up two spots only with the Falcons and get neighbors or a Dunze. I don't see much difference between them two and Harrison Jr. I, I don't think for a second that Malik neighbors will make it to eight. If he does, yes, trade up and get him. I'm with you. A Dunze might be there. If you get four quarterbacks in the top four, and let's say the Chargers take Harrison Jr., the Giants take Neighbors, the Titans select Joe Alt, Adunze's there at eight. I don't know if the Falcons are taking him. I think the Bears might take him at nine. So you got to get in front of Chicago. Atlanta might take Dallas Turner if he's considered the top defensive player. At nine, the Bears might be willing to listen for you to go up. Would you flip one of your fourth-round picks to go up one spot if the Bears are like, we're good with a bunch of players, we just want an extra pick? i trade one of the Jets' two fourth-rounders to move up one and get a Dunze, but they might just take them. So you might have to say, hey, Atlanta, will you be willing to move back two spots and we'll flip you our fourth? I would do that deal in a second. Because I think there could be other teams trying to come up to get a Dunze, so you got to go up to get them. Matias says, what's the update on Clowney? I love when people join the stream and they ask for an update. Matias, I appreciate you. We're 47 minutes in. Go back to the beginning, and I'll give you the full update on what I'm hearing. Jerome, have the Jets announced an official date for the new uniform reveal? They have not. They just said April. Adam writes in, Jake Jets fan here. There's no way the Giants will pass up on a playmaking receiver like Neighbors. Jets will pick the best remaining lineman. I mean, the Giants could pass up on a receiver if, it's a big if, one of the quarterbacks makes it to them. What if McCarthy's there at six? What do they do then? That's the question. I think they're going to take a receiver, though. I think that's... That's probably the most likely outcome. I do agree with that. Uh, hold on one second. Let's see. D Rock says it sucks. I bought a Wilson jersey. He wants to switch numbers. That was always happening, though. He, Garrett Wilson, you can't blame him. He was very transparent. He was always going to switch numbers. He told all of you this. It's why I hope you listen to me and get your jerseys from Parts Unknown. So you only spent 30 bucks on your 17 Garrett Wilson. All right. If you want the Parts Unknown link, you got to be on Patreon and message me, and I got you. Pittsburgh Mike writes in, my biggest criticism of Salah is not putting the hammer down more frequently. I agree with that, so let's see if it changes this year. Uh, I don't know if that would be my biggest criticism of him. I think this past year it was the undisciplined nature they played with from a penalty standpoint and the way they came out at the beginning of games. Muhammad says, are we truly satisfied with our offensive coaching staff? No. But what choice do we have? What choice do we have? Open phone lines. If anyone wants in on the conversation, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. There is a clip I wanted to play, so... Michael Nadia, I believe. Actually, was it blue? It was either Blewett or Nadia. I apologize. I forget where I saw it, but I pulled the clip. So this is just an example of what the Jets dealt with last year because how bad their quarterback situation was. 
So the Jets played against a stack box basically every play. Teams had no respect for the Jets quarterback. None. So this is the first play of the game against Dallas. Look at the box that Zach Wilson had here. Look at this. They're completely outnumbered. Brees has nowhere to go. Obviously, Uzama stinks and he misses the block, but it wouldn't have mattered. This is the first play of the game. I was at this game, and I said to myself, it's going to be a long day. After the Jets were already down 7-0 because the defense couldn't stop a nosebleed on that opening drive. Look at this. Aaron Rodgers will see this, check out of it. If they're dumb enough to ever put eight or nine players in the box against Rodgers. It's going to open up so many running lanes for Brees Hall. But Rodgers, as he did in that preseason drive we watched, when Wink Martindale was trying to blitz him every play, he checked out of it and just threw the out route to Garrett Wilson, who had one-on-one on the outside, and Garrett Wilson made the scrub Giants corner miss, and he picked up a first down easily. That's the difference, by the way, with having Aaron Rodgers. I saw that clip online. I'm like, this is this will be good to show. It's going to be rare the Jets see that stack box. It's going to change everything. Back to the calls we go. Is it midnight? Bobby Midnight up next. Hello, Bobby. Hey, how you doing, Jake? Bobby. Do you guys get your guy clowning? Uh, not yet, but they met with him, and apparently it went well. Did they give him a burger or a sandwich? You know, maybe they did, but we don't have that information yet. Oh, I see. Hey, guess what? Who's playing Duke? You believe who's playing Duke? Who's playing Duke? Vermont, where I live. Vermont. Ah. I hope the, Vermont beats Duke. The upset. Catamounts, baby. Yeah, I hope they upset them. Me and too. then you... Are you picking up any other wide receivers you want No free agency? I think they still could. Yeah, you want Boyd, right? I would. I, I don't think they're going to get him, but I would OBJ, take him. OBJ, right? If it's a one-year deal. I couldn't believe that came out of your mouth. I didn't, didn't think you like him. I, I didn't like him for one year at $15 million a season ago. I would take him yeah. on a one-year for $5 million deal. Yeah, that would be better, right? How yeah, much definitely. Did the Ravens pay him last year, do you know? F- $15 million. Oh, I see. Then, yeah, they let him go. Wow, that's good for you guys. Are you yeah. going to be on later tonight or this is your last show? Bobby, day? stay tuned, man. We'll probably be okay. live later. All right. Enjoy the games today. Okay, bye now. Goodbye, Bobby. Farewell. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Bobby Midnight. Super chat from Jimmy from Seattle. Hear me out. Wide receiver four, Josh Reynolds. Running back three, Cordell Patterson. Or Latavius Murray. Linebacker slash safety, Isaiah Simmons. My trade down scenario and tell the chat to relax and have fun. Uh, Look, Josh Reynolds would be an awesome signing. I don't know what Patterson's market is. Murray is another name to watch. Uh, I I don't know about Isaiah Simmons. I don't think the Jets will sign him. I don't think he's a scheme fit. Josh Reynolds, I would like. I, I like Josh Reynolds as wide receiver four. That's a that's a really good value signing if you can get him. So I'm in on that. Brandon says, any chance Kansas City trades for Zach since that was his one good game last year? I don't think they're going to give you anything for him. They'll just wait till he's cut. Uh, first state jet says sauce with his hands on the ball. That game still gives me nightmares. Yeah, man. I mean, if sauce picks that off. It's a pick six and it changes the entire tenor of the game. The craziest part about that ca- that game is the jets were in the- They were only down eight at halftime. And I remember like being in the stadium being like as bad as they play, they're only down eight. Like they're in this game with one drive. They got the ball to start the second half. And I'm like, if they could go down and score, we got a ball game. Because remember, they ended the first half. Zach actually made a couple of really good plays with his legs to pick up first downs, and they had to settle for a field goal. Right? Because Garrett Wilson had the uh like touchdown in the first half on like the play action throw over the middle. They were in that game, but yeah, I mean, they just did nothing on offense. And then Zach threw three fourth quarter interceptions when the game was out of reach. Because he was just trying to 
you know, make plays downfield to make up for it. Robert says Reynolds is just as good as Boyd. He's not, but he's cheaper. So I wouldn't hate that signing. Anthony says Zach Wilson for a Taylor Ham and Egg. That's insulting to the Taylor Ham and Egg. He has no value, people. None. It's unfortunate. I wish he did. It would help the Jets. And it would help Zach. I'm rooting for Zach to go somewhere and get a fresh start, but it has no value. Eventually, he's going to get cut. Back to the calls we go. The big fella is up next. Hello, big fella. What's up, Jake? How's it going? What's up, man? Um, Got to give props to King Lowski last night on AFC Roundtable. He brought it to those other three scrubs. I mean, he, he he is the ultimate Jet fan, in my opinion, and I have mad respect for him. I love it, man. He's he. I mean, Lowski always brings the intensity. He's the man. Now, uh, getting to the draft, I'm big on trading back for Fontanu, getting a second rounder, or maybe even a third rounder, you know, depending on how far we drop. Uh, JD, I think he's earned his I think he's earned his stripes this offseason for sure. Um, now it's up to Salah. He's got to, he's got to do the job, you know, and Hackett's got to, you know, figure out how to be an offensive coordinator, <laughs> but, uh, you know, you can't blame JD if, you know, things go south this, this, uh, this season, uh, he did everything that he could, you know, to yeah. be honest. Well, so I, like, I, I struggle with this a little bit because like, what if all these guys he signed ended up getting hurt and it's like, you know, we could blame him for being, for, being put in the spot where he had to sign these guys in the first place. You know, like under the circumstances, he's done what he's needed to do. But the right. reason why they needed to sign Tyron Smith is because they missed on Mekhi Becton, for example. The reason why they needed to, you know, bring in John Simpson is because his big free agent move with Lakin backfired and was terrible. You know what I mean? Like, like I agree. he's done a good job, yes, relative to what he had to do, but they're in this spot because of his inability to Solve quarterback, solve backup quarterback. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. he's made up for his mistakes, but right. they have to now work for us to truly feel like, all right, he's learned from it and they're headed in the right direction. No, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. I absolutely agree with that. But he saw the he saw the problem. His job's on the line and he's trying to fix it the best he can. Exactly. And, exactly. And like, you can't criticize him for the moves he's made. You could simply say, great, now win. And then, and then you can get a contract extension, you know? Exactly. Exactly. So... I think I think drafting O line in the draft uh, this year is is priority because you know we have we have injury risks. That's why I think Fautano would be good because he could play either position for our oft prone players. You know, and I think I think Marvin Harrison would probably be a luxury more more of a luxury than a need. You know, it'd be great to have him, but I'm looking for uh, you know some stability to protect our quarterback that's, hey, that's it yeah look I, I still think o-line i'm with you is more of a need than another weapon but i'm not going to sit here and pretend like i wouldn't be pumped if they made that aggressive trade up and they ended up with harrison or neighbors or if they just took a dunes av somehow there king lowski says love you big fella and david says big fella thanks for the gifted membership i mean between king lowski and big fella the amount of uh memberships that have been gifted the last week or so. Just incredible. Great community. Matthew writes, you know, the Jets heroes or villains next year when we go on our playoff run? They're going to be the villains. They're, they're going to be the villains. Uh, the national media despises Aaron Rodgers because they don't align with him politically. And it's the Jets. People love to make fun of the Jets. Can't live in a world where the Jets are actually a good team, which they will be if Aaron Rodgers is healthy. Mr. Downtown says, Jake, would you prefer a Kareem Hunt or Matt Burita type back to back up Brees? Kareem Hunt. That name intrigues me. Didn't he sign somewhere, though? Am I missing that? Let me check that. I don't know if he's available. No, he's still out there. That's a name to watch. V 
Vinny says, exactly, Jake. You won't see eight in the box with Aaron, and that alone makes the O-line better. If you do put eight in the box with Aaron Rodgers in there, he'll check out of it and get it to the playmakers in space. This play will not happen next year. Where you start a game on the first play, and because the Jets have absolutely no confidence in Zach Wilson, they still run this play. Like, Aaron Rodgers is laughing if you do this to him. You're going to put eight guys in the box on the first play of the game and think he's not going to audible out of it? I mean, uh, it's going to change. That's just how it goes. Mr. Bonesy, he writes in, Jake, true Joe Douglas has three legs. No comma. But it's true. Or is it? Comments, questions, super chats. We'll cut the line. New Jersey, the super trucker just became an as maniac, baby. Let's go. Money, 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 money. Thank you, New Jersey, the super trucker. Make sure you get your bracket submitted because you still got, like, I think eight minutes before the first NCAA tournament game is underway and the brackets locked. So go to the members only section on my YouTube channel, find the link, join the bracket challenge and fill out your bracket. It's included in your membership and we're giving away a bunch of awesome prizes. Big Nick Energy says, doesn't Joe Douglas have to dot, dot, dot win at some point to be glazed as much as he is? Yes. Yes. He does. That's what I'm saying. The disparity in how Robert Salas covered or how feel, fans feel about him versus the GM is wild to me. And people will be like, well, you know, Salah's got to win. You know, Douglas has done. Who hired Salah? This general manager. So 100%. First State Jets says, we got good memories of Garrett Wilson in 17. Frame it and get ready for the fire that's to come as number five with Rodgers throwing the ball. I, I can't wait. You don't got you, you to tell me to get excited about the prospect of Garrett Wilson catching passes from a Hall of Fame quarterback. New Jersey, the super trucker says, say it with me, Jake. Pork roll, egg and cheese, not Taylor Ham." Well, the Jets facility is in northern New Jersey, though. So I was told that northern New Jersey calls it Taylor Ham, and it's pork roll for central and south Jersey. I don't know. You people in New Jersey, I don't get it. All right? I, I grew up on Long Island, so I, I, I'm tapping out of the pork roll Taylor Ham debate. I'll leave that for you New Jerseyans to figure out. J-Rod says, Baltimore, San Francisco. San Diego didn't improve. Do you mean the Chargers? LA Chargers, J-Ron? I don't really care about San Fran. They're in the NFC. I, I think the teams that you should care about if you're a Jet fan, Bills, Dolphins. I think they either got worse or stayed the same. I think the, the Jets, if they did nothing this offseason, improved because they have Aaron Rodgers back. But they've obviously significantly improved because of what they've done to revamp the O-line and adding Mike Williams. Nick says, did the Yankees luck out on not signing Yasha Nobu? Uh, look, I saw he got bombed this morning. I woke up to that. He gave up, what, like five runs in the first inning? By the way, how stupid is Major League Baseball to put opening day for their two biggest stars of the offseason in Otani and Yasha Nobu? Yamamoto putting in these games in Korea. But that's besides the point. Look, I, Nick, I'm not going to sit here and say the Yankees lucked out on outside. He's had one start. We've got to give him a break. That being said, it is pretty absurd that a guy who's never thrown a pitch in Major League Baseball signed the highest pitching contract of all time. 
So am I hoping he's terrible? Yeah, obviously. He didn't sign with the Yankees, so I hope he stinks. But I'm not going to say the Yankees lucked out just yet. I did see the Yankees are back in on talks with Jordan Montgomery. That would be a good move to get done because Jordan Montgomery is a good player. Good pitcher. Playoff experience, I'd take him back. Big Nick Energy says, I wish the Jets tried to offer Lamar something last year. He was never taking your offer. The Ravens were going to match anything, and the Jets didn't want to do the negotiation for the Ravens anyway. And by the way, let's not have revisionist history. Aaron Rodgers coming off last year made more sense than Lamar did. Lamar had not been able to finish a season the previous two years. Rodgers had not missed the game since 2017. The circumstances obviously look different when you lose Rodgers in the opening drive of the season and Lamar wins the MVP, but I think it's, I think it's revisionist history to be like, they should have got Lamar. They were never going to get Lamar. It was never available for them. Um, King Lowski says, how do we feel about Cortez starting, Jake? Well, I, I mean, it makes sense. If Cole's not going to go opening day and Stroman wanted to stay on schedule so he could pitch the home opener. I'm good with Nasty Nestor starting. I'll be at the game one week from today. It's my last day in Houston. So I'm spending it, hopefully watching the Yankees beat the Astros. Um, Pittsburgh Mike says, Pats at Jets better be in prime time so the world could see us dominate. I would love Jets Pats week one, man. It won't happen, but I'd love that. I would love it. Michael Mike says, plus 2,200 odds, Jets winning the Super Bowl. Get the bets in now. I would I would shop that around. You could get better odds elsewhere. I found 2,800 yesterday at a sports book I use. All right. By the way, for those curious, it is official that Jordan Travis will take a visit with the Jets in a few weeks. Would like him as QB3. I would. Connor thinks that Jets Niners week one primetime in San Fran. I think the Jets open at home, Connor. I'd be surprised if they're on the road. Um, Dan writes in, it's weird and kind of poetic how the stars are starting to align with the Rodgers sacrifice last year. We didn't lose a first round pick and our team got better. Kind of like we weren't ready for A-Rod. The only way I will feel this way, Dan, is if they win the Super Bowl this year. Because nothing will replace the feeling of watching Rodgers go down four plays in and knowing we were in for a nightmare season. I knew even uh, even uh, though I tried to convince myself that somehow Zach would be good and he would be fine and they'd be able to win, it was a house of cards. It would be another year of the Jets being ripped by everyone, everyone wanting to fire everyone, which is completely irrational. I get the frustration, but irrational. So, no. I won't say the Stars are starting to align unless they win the Super Bowl this year. That's the only way I'll ever get over the Aaron Rodgers injury. John says, first jersey and the new threads you're getting. Uh, probably a Jermaine Johnson 11. That's probably the first one. D-Rock, Jets, Bills, rematch at home. I had a funny feeling it was going to be the Texans. But after, you know, Deion Dawkins opened up his mouth shirtless again, I think it's going to be... Maybe the Bills again, yeah. I'm still going with the Texans, because why not? Cactus Johnny says Bruce Hall. Yeah, I'll get a Bruce Hall jersey. We sent one. We sent the Lane Train jersey to Lane Kerner. Beth Page Chris says we have nine road games this year. We'll probably start on the road. What does that have to do with the NFL schedule, though? Week one, they tailor the best matchups. We know the Jets are likely in prime time. Why wouldn't you want to put Rodgers' first game back 
in primetime at home. Putting Rodgers on the road, I don't know. It, it feels weird. It, it should be at home. I think they're playing at home week one. Big fella, Texans at Jets is the Asman Bowl. It really is. Gator writes in, what do you think is the best game to start 2024, home slash away, difficult or easy opponent? I mean, I'd love an easy opponent. Who wouldn't want a free win to start the year? But I think I think it's going to be a tough opponent. I think it's going to be the Bills, the Texans, could be the Dolphins. It's not going to be easy. Why does the NFL ever make things easy for the Jets? They gave them the most difficult schedule in the last 10 years to start the year. Yet they still started 4-3 and three and then blew it. It was all in front of them. But they had no quarterback. And then once they lost ABT, the line just, that was it. Couldn't Couldn't hold up. Couldn't run the ball anymore with Brees to cover for how bad Zach Wilson is. And that was the end of the year. I mean, I'd love New England at home if I could pick one opponent. I don't think it's going to happen. I think the Jets open at home. So their options for home for, for week one are obviously the three divisional opponents, Houston, Indy, Denver, the Rams, and the Seahawks. It's one of those teams because I think they're playing at home. Um, Beth Page says, my guess is Miami on Monday night. It could be. It could be Miami. I could see it. Dan says, Jake, if we go to the Super Bowl, do all of us 36.6 thousand subscribers do a Super Bowl meetup? Ha. Yes. I, I I can't imagine what that's like, the Jets in a Super Bowl, but sure, we'll do a meetup if they're in the Super Bowl. We'll get everyone to New Orleans. I mean, we'll be doing live streams all week. Could be crazy. D-Rock, will our schedule be as difficult as last year? How do they determine that? Well, the, the schedule is based on the rotation of the out-of-conference division you play and the in-conference division you play, plus where you finished in your division. So when you hear the term a last-place schedule, first-place schedule, the Jets, who finished third in the AFC East, will play a third-place schedule. And now with 17 games, it's also a little convoluted because you have this year they're going to play an extra road game, whereas last year they played an extra home game. In fact, the Jets actually had technically two extra home games if you count the Giants game because they played at MetLife, even though the Giants were the home team. You know, for example, the third place schedule, you play your division opponents no matter what, so that's six of your games right there. The Jets are scheduled this year to play the AFC South, so you'll play Houston. Indy, Jacksonville, and the Tennessee. And the Jets are also scheduled to play the NFC West. So you'll play Seattle, the Rams, Arizona, and San Francisco. Because of their third place schedule, they will play the Pittsburgh Steelers, who came in third place in their division. The Minnesota Vikings, who came in third place in their division. And the Denver Broncos. Actually, no. Do I have that right? No, I think Denver, third place. Yes, and Denver, because they came in third place in their division. So that's how it's done. So I think I did that right. That's how they determine it. couple more minutes here, then we will wrap up. Dave says, posted some support for you on Reddit, Jake. Thank you, Dave. By the way, I was kind of kidding. Like, uh, I, A lot of people on Reddit uh, are very complimentary of this show, but there's some that don't like the show. Someone accused me of not taking real Henny sips, and I'm offended by that because I am definitely drinking Henny when I'm drinking it. Ugh. 
You, go go watch the Tyron Smith live stream and tell me that I'm not actually drinking the Henny. But shout out to Jets Reddit. Blackjack says, will we get five primetime games again this year? Will we? Um, I think so. If not more. Should we? I don't know. Um, let's see. Ronald, Jets Steelers open the season. I don't think they're going to put the, look, if the Jets are on the road, sure. They play Pittsburgh at Heinz Field, though, or whatever they're calling it now. It's always going to be Heinz Field to me. Mad Willie says all those games are winnable with a healthy Rodgers in this roster. When you look at the Jets schedule, who's the what's the one game you say they have no chance of winning? There really isn't any one game you could say there's no way they could win. The toughest game I think is San Fran on the road for sure. But we're going to sit here and pretend like they can't beat the Bills. They beat the Bills the last two years with Zach Wilson at quarterback. The Dolphins, who have gotten worse this offseason and are went 1 and 5 against teams with a good record last year. New England sucks. The Jets even beat them last year. Finally. They beat Houston last year. They could do it again. Indy, we have no idea what Anthony Richardson is. The Broncos are in flux. Who's their quarterback right now? We don't know. The Rams are good, but you have them at home. That's cross country. Seattle's in flux right now. New coach. Geno Smith doesn't scare you. He's a solid quarterback, as we know. Pittsburgh on the road. It's not easy to play there, but the Jets could beat Russell Wilson or Justin Fields. Jacksonville's a good team, but that's not that game's probably in London, so who knows? Tennessee's a winnable game. Minnesota's a winnable game. Who's their quarterback right now? Sam Darnold? That game might be in London, too. One of those games could be in London. Jacksonville and Minnesota. Arizona away? Like, it's a winnable game. Like, the Jets aren't going to go 17-0, and but I promise you they have a chance in all these games because they have a Hall of Fame quarterback with a great defense and a great special teams unit. Oh, yeah, that's the bottom line. All right. Like, I'm not going to win every game, but they sure as hell should have a chance to compete in every game. They better. That's the minimum expectation. Show me the money. Show me the money! Money, money, money. Ah! Back to back super chats. Jeffrey says, Hey, Jake, enjoyed your 95.3 interview on Patreon. Thanks for the great work. At Team Tackle LFG. Jeffrey, you're the man. Appreciate you. Jeffrey's a Patreon member, a channel member, an Asmaniac, and he super chatted us. You're the man, Jeffrey. Uh, for those on Patreon, I did a radio hit on the morning show on 95.3 Sports Radio in Tampa Bay, talking about the NFL offseason, some Jets in there, some Todd Bowl stuff in there. So if you're on Patreon, you got that interview posted this morning. So that's a bonus show for you. Check that out. Hennessy with a super chat. Who would have thought that the Buffalo win from two years ago would start this Henny celebration? I love it. Also, give me fraud ass Miami week one. Henny, you're the reason why, man. For those who don't know the backstory with the Hennessy stuff, because I recognize we get new channel viewers all the time. Hennessy guaranteed the Jets were going to beat the Bills when they were like 13 and a half point underdogs with Zach Wilson a couple years ago. That was after Wilson had the three interception game against New England. The game, Michael Carter had the pick six that we were robbed of by the JFM BS roughing the passer call. Henny said, if the Jets win, I got to drink Hennessy on the air with him. And that's how it started. So now after great wins or awesome Jet free agent signings or trades, it is tradition. We celebrate with Hennessy. That's the backstory because I've been asked a lot about that. DeAndre, Jets Roundtable today. 1 p.m. Eastern on the AFC East Roundtable channel. I'll be on there. So we're going to wrap up here shortly. Jets Pauly says, Henny should sponsor Jake's show. They should. Hey, any small business owners out there or just people with businesses, we have open inventory 
for sponsorship opportunities. Please email me ASAP, though, because we have big plans for the NFL draft. And if you want your product, your brand, your company to potentially be involved in what will be likely by far and away our most viewed offseason streams of the year, you're going to want to reach out to me at asmanjake at gmail.com. I'll connect you with my marketing representative, and we will come up with a plan for your business. So I'm calling all people that are interested in advertising on this channel that's approaching 37,000 subscribers to reach out because we got big things planned for the draft. Dr. Frank Falcone Jr. says, why do I feel like no matter who they sign, something bad will happen? Injuries, poor coaching, etc. is going to cause them to suck. Well, because you're a Jet fan, Frank. That's why. You know the answer. You had Aaron Rodgers. You had hard knocks, all the hype, the excitement. It lasted four plays. So that's why. I understand that feeling. I go back to something Ian O'Connor said on the show that was awesome. Remember when the Red Sox lost to the Yankees in 03 in game seven? The Aaron Boone home run, the curse of the Bambino. The next year, they won the World Series. So, as Aaron Rodgers said after he got hurt, it's always the darkest before dawn. The Jets Super Bowl DVD actually starts with Rodgers getting hurt the previous season if they end up winning the Super Bowl this year. Just saying. That's the start of the DVD. The first scene in the movie is that injury, that play. That's how you got to look at it if you want to be positive. Do we know when the schedule comes out? Typically, it's in like mid-May. Um, couple more here. I'm just laughing at Hennessy calling the Dolphins fraud-ass fish. That's something Lowski would yell out. Fraud-ass fish! See? Here's a comment from Lowski. Make sure y'all set that fraud fish roundtable straight, Jake. Ha! It's I, it's just a jet roundtable I'm on, King, because I don't think I got to deal with TD and any of the other Dolphin guys. I think it's me, Richie, Matt, O'Leary. Big fella says, funny how the 90s Yanks and the Jets have a core four. Well, who would the Jets core four be? I'm guessing it would be Sauce, Garrett, Brees, and Jermaine, right, from the same draft class. But then Quinn and Williams would basically be like Bernie Williams. Right? Benny says that 2024 Jets America's game is going to hit hard AF. Benny Baboon, from your lips to God's ears, man. Oh, my God. I dream of one day watching a, a Jets America's game that's not the 1968 season. Uh... NYJ TV says, Jake, if the Jets host a playoff game this year, will you be there? Yeah, I hope so. Why wouldn't I? We might go another 20-something years before the next one. So if they get one this year, you best believe I'm going to do everything uh, within reason to be there. Man. Home playoff game. Imagine that. I can't. I can't imagine. Big Frank, I'll take Seattle week one. Yeah, so would I, but I, I don't think they're going to give Jets the Seahawks in week one in prime time. Eric says, Jake, do people comment on your non-Texas accent down in Houston? No. A lot of people down here don't have accents. There's a misconception that, like, Houston is like Friday Night Lights. Like, everyone's on horses and wearing cowboy boots. It's the fourth biggest city in the country. 
most people don't have accents. And there's a, it's also like one of the most transient cities ever. The amount of New Yorkers that live here are people from Boston, Philly, Chicago is huge here. When the Cubs played at Minute Maid Park against the Astros a few years ago, I covered that series. It was Wrigley Field South. It was ridiculous. Seriously, it was like 80% Cubs fans. One last call that we're going to take because he's our leader. He's our king. King Lowski closes out. What's up, King? Jake, my brother. Jake, my brother. It's always a blessing to see you, my brother. I just wanted to set some things straight to you before you got on this Jets round table. I was <laughs> saying that these fools, these fraud fish out here talking about the Jets running a retirement home, talking all of this delusion like they got better this season. Okay, I just want you to set the I want y'all to be delusional as hell on y'all round table. You Matt O'Leary, you uh, uh and 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 Richie, okay, you and Ryan, I want y'all to be delusional as hell about the Jets because them fraud fish got a lot to say. But I promise you, if we see you week one, we gonna demolish you. If we see you anytime. We're going to put a presidence on you, and we're going to put some pressure on you. You hear me? I want y'all to set them fraud fish straight, Jake. You hear me? T-E-T-S! Yes, yes, yes! Let's go, Jake! Let's go, King. I love that bucket hat, man. Love it. Let's go. Hit the King Lowski emoji in the chat if you're watching live. Let's go. Let's go, King. I love it. I love it, man. Good to have this fan base fired up again, led by King Lowski. Who should be giving the pregame speech week one to the Jets before they come out of the tunnel? Let's go. Love it. Love it. Hit the like button on your way out of here as well. Once again, I want to thank everyone for their support. Roundtable coming up at uh, 1 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Central. Thanks again. To everyone, and I plan to be back in the afternoon working on some big name guests as well. So we got some big things brewing here on the channel as we continue to talk Jets every single day. Before we leave, Huga House, you see the hat I'm wearing? See the hat that Aaron Rodgers always wears? They're now one of our new sponsors. If you want a Huga House hat, you can get 15% off when you use the promo code ASMIN at checkout. Thanks again to Huga House for sponsoring the show. Underdog Fantasy, I'll say it again. Deposit match up to $100. March Madness, it's underway. We got two games on right now. Izzo in March. I was all over. Michigan State, they're off to a good start here in the first half of the first tournament game. Promo code ASMIN at Underdog. Sign up. Take advantage of that deposit match. You won't regret it. It is a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. I'll talk to you guys soon. J-E-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. Hit it, Elon. I believe we have the founder of Twitter calling in, Elon Musk. So this should be interesting. Uh, Elon? Hey, Jake. Elon Musk here. Just wanted to let you know that I purchased the New York Jets today. You'll be excited to know that they will now be called the New York X. I decided to make this announcement from B-Man's house as I know how much he loves me. Let's go, X. Oh, what's up? It's killing me. <laughs> just sorry, I'm just muttering randomly, but the... Honestly, I don't. Sorry, I am just choking. Let's go, X. El burro. Elon, thanks for the time. He's gone. Oh, what just happened? What the hell just happened there? Oh, my God. That's got to be a Gator masterpiece, right? I mean, come on now. Elon Musk from V-Man's room. <laughs> Calling the Jets X now. I don't think you could do that, Elon. I don't know what that was. The last thing we need right now is, is his distraction buying the team. <laughs> Elon Musk calling in from V-Man's house. Yeah, the, the Weepa being in there from V-Man. Oh, my God. Maybe, maybe some of Gator's best. The New York X. Good luck any caller trying to top that one. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us right now is none other than Chiefs fan. Hello, Chiefs fan. Yo, last night, I... 
was outside talking and I walked over and checked on my neighbor and I found out my neighbor passed away in his lawn chair. So this call, this call was not going where I thought it was going. Well, he, like the, old, the old man had a bladder problem. So let's just say that he was, he was nineties. He didn't take his medication and he was going to smoke a cigar with me, but, but he wasn't there. Is it a real story? This is a real story. And he passed away on his lawn chair in yeah. the middle of the Super Bowl. Walked inside of his house, checked on his dog, poured a shot of vodka, and I'm like, you know, this isn't going to be enough. Chugged about one-fourth of the vodka that we usually drink. I'm like, the old man had to die during the big game. But yeah, I was happy we won. <coughs> yeah, hey, Chiefs fan, congrats on the Super Bowl win, man. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I figured this was going to be a celebratory call for the great Chiefs fan. And it was not that.